anything for a laugh. 20 years of the best of the Chuck Berry Show. Tonight, the dating game, the newlywed game, the gong show, the rah-rah show, the Dollar 98 beauty show, the Bobby Vinton show, Operation Entertainment, and the new newlywed game. It's anything for a laugh. Our stars, Nelson Burrow, Elaine Boozler, Carol Burnett, George Burns, Alice Cooper, John Davidson, Phyllis Stiller, Bob Eubanks, Jamie Farr, Farrah Fawcett, John Forsythe, Ron Howard, Marty Ingalls, George Jesso, Artie Johnson, Jackie Kahane, Jim Lang, Gypsy Rose, Lee, Rich Little, Lou Ann, Paul Lynn, Butterfly McQueen, J.P. Morgan, Tony Randall, Burt Reynolds, Don Rickles, Bob Saget, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Suzanne Summers, Rip Taylor, The Unknown Comic, Henny Youngman, and presenting the man with the cutest haircut in the world, let's give a big hand to Chuck Barrett. As I work with a lot of talented people, and Chuck Barrett certainly isn't one of those. And now I'd like to introduce the man with the charm of Cary Grant, the good looks of Paul Lawrence Olivier. I would like to introduce that man, but I'm stuck with Chuck Barrett. Thank you. We're going to show you moments from our programs over the last 20 years that hopefully will make you laugh. And here to help me do that are my friends who will do anything for a laugh. Bob Eubanks. what we've got for you tonight. Like I said, we've been through 20 years of the shows we all did, and we're going to show you some that really have good stuff in them. All that the law will allow, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we know, we know. <laughs> the Dating Game, February 1967. See if they recognize one of the biggest stars in television today. Number one, would you say good evening to Madonna, please? Howdy, Madonna. Thank you. Number two. Hello, Madonna. Number three. Good evening, Madonna. Um, number two, if you were a statue, what would you be doing and what would you be called? I'd be holding a fig leaf and, uh... <laughs> I'd be called nude. <laughs> this is the moment of truth now. Well, I think number three. Back to number three. Before we meet him, I'd like you to meet the gentleman you did not select. You did not select bachelor number two, and he rides tall in the saddle, too. He's six feet four. Varsity basketball player would like to be a businessman someday from Detroit, Michigan, Tom Selleck. Tom, come on and say hello to Madonna. The handsome basketball player from Detroit is doing okay these days, and rightly so, and I appreciate the fact that he let us show you that tonight. I remember... Well, right, just a second, Jim. Now, now Chuck... We were funnier. The gong show was that's funnier right. than the dating game. Yeah, well, uh... Yeah, yeah well, uh... Well, I'm gonna show you. I'll show you what I mean. Do Dr. Flamo. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Flamo. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Flamo. All right. Okay. The newlyweds were the funniest. Oh, if your husband's last girlfriend called him on the phone and said, meet me, you know where. Now, where would he go to meet that last girlfriend? It better be at the house. At whose house? Mine. I want oh, to at see your what, house. I want to see what it's going to be about. All right, Philip said that he would meet, he would meet this girl at a motel. What motel? <laughs> What motel? <laughs> what motel? <laughs> you got your dirty nurse saying you gonna meet somebody at a motel. <laughs> it best to be me. Je jump in there, Philip, and talk when you want to. It is you. It is you. But is it the question? You know. I don't care if it is a question. Where's your dirty mind at? You better not be nobody at a motel. <laughs> about all the comics that did our shows. 
over the years. Tonight, a special tribute to the comics. My folks hated me. They wouldn't even touch me. They used to say, go spank yourself. <laughs> they had to tie a pork chop around my neck to make the dog play with me. We'll be back. And the name of this game is Anything for Less. Next, Bert Reynolds, Suzanne Summers, John Forsythe, Carol Fawcett, Ron Howard, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and hilarious highlights from The Gong Show, when Chuck Norris returns with anything for a laugh. McDonald's Crew Kids. There have been a lot of great ones in the last 30 years. Where are they today? Here's looking at you kids, McDonald's Crew Kids. You sure have gone a long way. Here's to Tom Hall. The stars in our sky still shining on high. To Lieutenant Wold. Our unsung hero who carried the day. Here's to you, Manu. You still got to win and ways about you. Here's looking at you, Dr. Gailmard. Never would have made it to the top. to today. Here's to every crew member who's kept those arches shining. You make it a good time. Hats off to you, wherever you are. The great, great, great of McDonald's. This gentleman and I met each other in 1965. Yep, that was 2,526 dating games ago, Chuck. How do you remember that? They told me. Right. The dating game was the baby of the family, the first. Most of the time, a girl would have a choice of three guys. A famous celebrity, a handsome playboy, and a real nerd. It was a show based on a form of Russian roulette. And when we started out, Chuck, remember, we had a celebrity on every show, and a lot of them became some of the biggest stars. And I'm proud to say Burt Reynolds loved the show, and we loved it every time he came on. Complete this sentence uh, in your own way. In your own way, it says here. Oh, yes. Bert, if you're the man I think you are, you'll... Knock me dead in a second. <laughs> bring me back to bed. Bring me back to life. Ahem. <laughs> this is a good one. All right. I have a... Well, bachelorette number two. I have a reputation for giving gifts to girls. It Ooh, says I here. I like those kinds. If, if I could give you anything you wanted, what would you like, and how would you like it wrapped? Ooh. Well. <laughs> huh? Who wrote this stuff? Erskine Cladwell? <laughs> Hello? You could put a pink bow on it. A pink bow on it. <laughs> I work so much that I seem to forget things. So what's so great about necking? Oh, you can have a really good time necking. It helps you forget all your problems. You just, when you're not working, neck. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what do you do between kisses? <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> One of our great stars, John Forsythe, paid a visit to the dating game in search of a date for his TV daughter. Now, uh, bachelor number one, this is an unusual situation for the dating game because we have the opportunity to talk man to man. <laughs> so tell me, yes, if you were a girl, what would your most outstanding feature be? <laughs> I'd say it would have to be my legs. I have exquisite <laughs> legs, as you can uh, see. If you'll all watch the monitor in the audience there. You can see that I have rather knobby knees, and yet the hair covers uniquely. These are my measurements. Now, don't freak out. <laughs> Biceps, 22 inches, chest, 57, waist, 33, size, 29. What do we have in common? You get smaller as you go down. <laughs> By the way, this is not true. <laughs> I just finished a book of poetry called Touch Me. Do me a favor and close your eyes and pretend our lips are touching and compose a poem about what you would be feeling. When was the first time I saw thee? Are you awake? How long does it take to make a tree? 
Describe your idea of a romantic love scene. Two people out in the woods by a lake with a waterfall, right towards the end of the day, a really warm summer evening. Well, I think that's a very, very vivid description. Of course, if you're terribly interested in the girl you're with, or vice versa, a motel in Glendale would be better than <laughs> I've just given you bachelor number two. What are you going to do with him? <laughs> well, go dancing. <laughs> Don, Don, jump up in a the chair there. Here's Don Rickles looking for a date for his daughter, Denise. For the sake of Denise, uh, convince me that uh, you're not, you're not a, a, a dummy kid. <laughs> and number three, are you off? Are you off? <laughs> Say something. Fire me to land. Wake him up. I know, good job. What does it say? I gotta talk to a guy that dozes off on this show. So far, Jim, you got a big partner. <laughs> how, how do you feel about it, number one? Uh, I think I can keep it pretty live. I don't, I'm not too sure about you, though. <laughs> okay, that's one for the smart guy. <laughs> smart guy leading the dummy, one nothing. <laughs> such a busy community worker. Could you help me a little with the housework, say the cooking, the laundry, the shopping, the front, the backyards, and uh, the mending? And would you like me to choose an apron for you with ruffles, or do you want to pick out your own apron? No, I, I don't think I'm going, honey. <laughs> Which one will it be? Will it be bachelor number one? Bachelor number two? Oh, that's her number three. All right, Eileen, which one, which one are you going to select? Number two. <laughs> that, that's her number two, Mr. Marty Ingalls. Marty, say hello to Eileen. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, you now must make a decision. Number two. Number two, all right. All right, Bachelor number two. That's terrific. Is there any particular reason, Farrah, why you selected Bachelor number two over the other fellas? Because of the flowers. Because of the flowers. You like? He's going to send you that once more. Now, tell the truth, Chuck. You set Farrah Fawcett up for that one, didn't you? We sure did. Her three bachelors were all movie stuntmen. And we should have had stuntmen when Gypsy Rose Lee did the show. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right, Chuck. I mean, she was something else. For those of you who don't know, Gypsy was the top of her field, the number one striptease dancer of all time, and a truly great lady. When Gypsy came to the dating game, she told nothing but the naked truth. Oh, I'm gonna hate myself in the morning, but I'll take three. Number three. All right, all right now let's meet the other two. You didn't select bachelor number one, who is a franchise coordinator for a major chain of restaurants. He enjoys tennis and is in uh, fine fettle from Duluth, Minnesota, Sam Goldenberg. Sam, come on and say hello to Gypsy Rose Lee, if you will. Oh. Gypsy, that's... I'd never be glad that I didn't choose you. <laughs> wait till you see... Wait a minute, Gypsy. You didn't choose Bachelor number two. He's a television producer and director. He did a great uh, educational bit on therapy last year on television, Mr. Lauren Schwab. Larry, if you would, please come and say hello to Gypsy Rose Lee. I don't kiss on the first date. Let me tell you something about your date. Gypsy, he's a designer and a color consultant. He wants to live in Europe and import art objects. Are you ready? From Kansas City, Missouri. got some big nose nonsense for you. I heard that. <laughs> big nose nonsense. Uh, is that your clever way of introducing me again? You know, you're just in time for the gong show segment. Yes, I know, I know. I got the statistics right here. Oh. Ready for this? Sure. There were over 600 shows. 600? Mm -hmm. Close to 4,000 contestants. 
can't believe it. 4,000. Right. 3,900 of whom got gonged. That many? Yep, that many. <laughs> Who was the host? The host? You got me. I, I don't remember the host. <laughs> Let me give you a hint. Uh -huh. Try to remember who signed the checks. You mean the host of the gong show was insufficient funds? <laughs> that gives you an idea what I had to put up with all those years. Chuck, the gong show was fun. Oh, uh, you had to be there to see it. Well, then let's see it. Okay. Where do you want me to look? Right in there. Right in there? Yeah. I got it. The other night I saw the gong show for the first time. I'm not sure, but I think it might make me quit show business. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Kerman Swayze, and this here is a Timex wristwatch. Excuse me? <laughs> Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Huh? <laughs> Here's a quick impression of the first man to land on the sun. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> on physical fitness. First, we have an unfit body. <coughs> now, you take this body and bring it slowly up. If this gets boring, back down. You can take the entire thing and move it all the way up. Or back down quickly. Or back up quickly. Depends on what you want. Or if you don't want it there at all. And there's not. Now, what do you do with this kind of body? You take these weights and pick them up in the air. Now, with this body, but a new kind. One looks more powerful. So you change it. So it looks strong. Become strong. And finally, is strong. <laughs> now, these weights are child's play for a man of my strength. <laughs> Little old lady passing on, catching everyone's eye. You have such a charming manner, sweet and shy. Little bit of business here, little bit of business there. I can tell that you've been window shopping all around the square. That's really the place. That is. <laughs> Did she despair? Did she gnaw her teeth? Or read a novel? Alice Cooper. with more stuff right after this message. Oh, that's what I say. <laughs> Anything for a laugh continues with Bob Eubank and those unpredictable newlyweds. Plus a Chuck Barris tribute to the television comics next.
At Color Tile, we're running out of room. So now through Saturday only, we're taking drastic measures to make room by cutting prices in half or whatever it takes. We've cut 50% off a wide selection of ceramic walls, ceramic floor, and mosaic tile. And save on selected wall coverings and paint, all one half off. But hurry, you only have until Saturday to save, because we're determined to clear it out one way or another. Color Tile, where customer service makes all the difference. Bill Cosby here unveiling a new, very tasteful sculpture. Oh. Chocolate-covered jello pudding pops, frozen pudding on a stick. What inspired you? The new chocolate coating. Oh. You've really captured the contrast between the creamy, smooth jello pudding like Mom makes and the crunchy chocolate shell. So what do you call this masterpiece? Pop art. <laughs> new chocolate-covered jello pudding pops. Good news for your mouth and your mom. Relax and clutter your mind. Concentrate on nothing but the uncooler. Picture it pouring over ice, clear and light, unlike any other. Now taste it, unmistakably crisp and clean with no caffeine. Go ahead, savor it. Now when I snap my fingers, you wake up feeling totally refreshed. Seven up the uncooler. Ah. Sunday. There's just no denying it. First time that ever happened. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. Sooner or later, it happens to everyone. He's sorry, I'm sorry. I'm we're sorry, all we're all sorry. sorry. We're all sorry. <laughs> Steve Allen hosts an all-new Life's Most Embarrassing Moments, Sunday at 8, 7 Central. gets married, they want three things. A house, a bank account, and a chance to be on the newlywed game. And here's the man who said it, Bob Eubanks. Over the years, we interviewed about a quarter of a million people to be on the newlywed game. You must be tired. <laughs> no, no. I never got tired of it because, I, you know, people are really funny. In fact, newlyweds are just the funniest people in the world. No doubt about it. I'll tell you what, let's, let's take time out and show them. You got it. Tell me, what is the name of the very last girl who ha you had a romantic encounter with before you started seeing your wife exclusively? Uh, Carol. Carol be Carol. Have to be Carol. Carol. Nobody she said it had Carol. to be... Oh, Carol! Ronnie! Oh, no. Oh, you forgot I about Carol? Carol? How could you forget about Carol? I told her about Carol all the time. What about Ronnie? Oh, well, that's before that. Oh, this is Carol. That was six months ago. Hey, was Carol a looker? Oh. No, Carol. Was she a looker? No, a loser. She was a pleaser, baby. <laughs> If you're going to describe Carol on, on that license plate, what would you say on that one? Uh, built for comfort, not for speed. I do. <laughs> on what date did you and your husband make love for the very first time? Oh, uh, <laughs> October 74, 75? October what date? Uh, 15, 1974. 1974. Gee, Terry said it was, uh, it, it was October 5th, 1966. <laughs> Well, what? Gentlemen, on your wedding night, you remember your wedding night, I'm sure. On your wedding night, were you a bad boy or a good boy? Bad boy. You were a bad boy. Yeah. Terry, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. <laughs> you're a good boy. Always bad? a bad boy. How bad were you, Terry? Bad enough to be good. I see. <laughs> what kind of horse will your wife say her mother most resembles? Um. How about a donkey? <laughs> How much time went by between the moment your wife found out she was pregnant and the moment she told you? Within minutes, because... How many come... minutes? I'd say one, because as soon as she came out, she told me you she was pregnant. You creep, boy, you was... It took me ten minutes to get out of the office to get out there and tell you that. Now, you couldn't say one or went in there, you said almost 30 minutes. As soon as you walked out, you said, guess what, I'm pregnant. No, but it's me. You know, it took me at least ten minutes to be in doctor and sit the doctor and come back out. It's gonna be one minute. Well, as soon as you came out and told me it was no more than a minute. But I had found out before one minute, though. But I didn't know before that one minute, though. <laughs> but if 
if you calculate between the time I knew and you knew, you would say at least 10 minutes, because you was at the doctor's office with me. I know it. This is what I said. Yeah, I know what you said. <laughs> you all right, Margie? I'm fine. What is the one thing you do at home that your wife would love to see you perform? I make this face that I've had made for about 30 years. <laughs> My mom gave it to me. But, it's a uh, face you make. Yeah, it's called the Green Daddy face. Let me see it. No, I can't. It's great. Oh, that's it, huh? Okay, now, she says, it's your famous baby walk. Come on, huh? Ralph, 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 do me a favor. Ralph, I want you to go right over there. Come on, come on, Ralph. Come on, Ralph. Right over there. Right, 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 right over there, Ralph. Now, let, let, me, let, me see, let me see this famous baby walk, Ralph. The whole team is watching. Well, no, no cameras are on. They're all off. It's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> what traffic or road sign will your wife say best described her behavior on your wedding night? Dip. <laughs> I want you to give us your best imitation of the one noise in your house or apartment that bugs you the most. What is that? Scratching. What scratching? She's scratching. What's she scratching? Her behind. Oh! <laughs> she said that she's scratching her behind. <laughs> what is your husband's favorite Jewish food? What's his favorite Jewish food, Shirley? Favorite Jewish? Oh. Um, corn. Corn. <laughs> okay, he, he said that it's uh, just the top card, Rick, is really all I need this time, I think, is a bagels, he said. Bagels? Yes. What are bagels? <laughs> you can go ahead and tell her, Rick, what are bagels? I don't know, I'm Mormon. <laughs> oh. Besides the newlywed game, the gong show, and the dating game, we've done a lot of other shows the past 20 years. And in all of them, there's one thing that we love the best, and that's the comics. I heard that there's a new series coming out in the fall, and the plot centers around an unfaithful wife who's an infomaniac, and her boyfriend, who is a drug addict, and the husband is a sex nut who goes around making obscene phone calls and exposing himself. <laughs> it's called Just Plain Folks. The man walks into a psychiatrist. He says, nobody talks to me. He says, next. Supermarket cashiers are the toughest women in the world. I do. I was stuck in a supermarket robbery once. Cashiers didn't even blink. Big thugs came in as weapons. They had broken bottles. We want money. What are you guys, lunatics or something? It's a broken bottle. I can't give you five cents for that. Get out. <laughs> Come on, I got a gun. A gun? Give me that. Ernie, how much? People are reading nothing. I'm on the highway the other day fixing a tire. This cop pulls up. He said, what's the matter, fella? He got a flat? <laughs> I said, no, officer. I always rotate my tires on the highway. <laughs> this has happened to you, I'm sure. Notice it next time. I brought a prescription to the drugstore. Gave it to the clerk. He said, you want this filled? <laughs> I said, no, it's a hold-up note written in Latin. I put a priest up in Alaska. He's there for a year. The bishop goes up to visit him. He said, how do you like it here? He says, if it wasn't for my rosary and my two martinis a day, I couldn't stand it here. He says to the bishop, will you like a martini? He says, yeah, rosary, get the bishop a martini. Things are going real well, and it's, it's a real problem. I really don't have any friends, and I have no life, and I live in a moped, and it's kind of upsetting for me. And I, I, <laughs> no problem, but I really need friends real bad. I, uh, I really do. I had a lot of problems when I was young, and you all seem like a real nice-looking crowd. And I'm not just saying that, either. I'm also typing it. I have a stenographer in my pants, and I... <laughs> I had a very rough childhood. I never got to go to camp when I was young. This is true. My mom thought I'd get embarrassed undressing in front of little boys, but I've, uh, I've changed a lot because I kind of like it now. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of problems. I really did. I, uh, I never got to sleep over my friends' houses when I was young. And I asked my mom why not, and she said, Bob, you have no friends. You have no life. You have no future. <laughs> you know what? I'm not your mother, okay? And that's it. <laughs> my wife had plastic surgery this week. I cut up a credit card. <laughs> Very bad day. I slept right through my nap. My pet rock wet on me this morning. Here's a 
artificial flower passed away. I needed that. <laughs> Bought a praying mantis and it's an atheist. <laughs> hey, renovates, for God's sake. Men, we've been working on this dangerous mission for months and months. And today we're going on it. We'll be dropped behind enemy lines and we'll destroy their entire operation. Oh, it's gonna be rough. I know they outnumber us a hundred to one. <laughs> this ain't gonna be no picnic. It's gonna be rough and tough all the way. Sure wish I could be going with you, but... of anything for a laugh. More outrageous moments from the newlyweds, the gong show, and the dating games when we continue with 20 years of the best of the Chuck Berry Show. We work hard so you don't scrub. From the wall tiles to the tub. Scrub off basin. Scrub off floor tile shower and tub. Oh, you ain't got the thing if you ain't got that thing. Do it, do it, do it. Handy Wrap 2 with Cling Plus has twice as much cling as old Handy Wrap, so it seals in freshness and flavor longer. Try extra sugar free gum with NutraSweet. Extra flavor, extra fun in a sugar free gum. Extra sugar free gum with NutraSweet gives you extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra flavor for that extra long trail. Extra flavor for that extra long sale. Wrigley's Extra, the extra fresh flavor lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Get extra sugar free gum. From lost innocence to international stardom. Cut. Beautiful. Lily is back. What is it you want? But now, she's after three men who'll wish she'd never been born. If you pay for what he did. Sunday Lace 2, because revenge is sweet. More laughs when anything for a laugh continues following station identification. An ABC News Business Brief, brought to you by Federal Express. Now from Bonn, West Germany, Dan Kortz. Good evening. Leaders of seven major industrialized countries will meet here in Bonn tomorrow for the 11th Economic Summit. The main U.S. objective is new trade negotiations. Prime Minister Nakasone, who is here, pledged again to open Japanese markets. A new report says Japanese car exports to the U.S. rose 17% last year. GM, whose market share has been falling, today offered 8.8% financing on six models this month and AMC extended its low-rate financing plan through May. Lower earnings were reported by General Foods and Eastman Kodak. Now this. Federal Express schedules delivery by 10.30 a.m. when you're ready to take on the world. Not later in the day. After the world has taken on you. On New York financial markets, the Dow tumbled 16 points. Interest on T-bills fell. Gold lost a dollar, and the dollar finished mostly higher. That's Business Brief. From Bonn, West Germany, I'm Dan Kortz. Looking for a job, Mom? Very funny. Well, I am. Well, what's it this week, Laura? Marine biology? Why are we still hoping to be a star of stage and screen? Come on, Mom. It's a tough choice. Sure it's tough, and you can be anything you want to be. When you make a choice, what's right is what feels right. Diet Pepsi. You know, there's one choice I'll never regret. Politics? Mm -mm. Being a mother. Diet Pepsi, the one-calorie choice of a new generation. Where are you taking us, Rabbit? It's a surprise. You can tell me, Bucky, old oh, pal. See for yourself, Duck. Great, Great adventure, adventure. Yeah. Since Great Adventure opened Looney Tunes Land, the fun just got funnier. Funnier rides. Funnier shows. Funnier friends. <laughs> Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, we have bugs. Alleged police hit and run at 11. Welcome back to the second half of Anything for a Laugh, a look back at the past 20 years of our shows on the old tube. As you know, we had hundreds of stars who came to play the dating game, but when we went back through them, we realized that the true stars 
We're the civilians, the real people. It's what made it all work. What haven't you had since high school? A date. <laughs> Number one, I want to ask you what shape you want your next mate to be. A uh, parallelogram. <laughs> now, if you could have any message written across any one article of clothing, what article of clothing would that be, and what would it say? It would say... What would it be first? It would be my blouse, and oh, it would yeah. say, I'm expensive. You're expensive? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me I had to pay. <laughs> In certain Polynesian islands, the girls wear a flower, wear a flower over their ear to show when they're available. What do you wear when you're available? Well, uh, when I'm real available, I do not wear anything. <laughs> Sing me the song that best describes your financial status. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, <laughs> he is one of the outstanding nightclub acts in the business. He and his brothers, uh, wherever they go, demand great salaries. I know you've seen them on television. Here is your date, Danny. Danny, come on and say hello to Linda. Long time no see. Oh, do we have a lot to talk about. When she starts talking, we end up in the middle of Ted Koppel's news. Oh. <laughs> well, are you going to run some more gongs? That's why we're here. Oh, long time no see. <laughs> There's got to be a Cuba in the bag. <laughs> Hi, I do strange impressions, and... Uh, the first impression I like to do tonight is a water sprinkler. show brings back a lot of memories and I have to tell you one story we were going great guns with the gong show we've been on for a few years with hundreds and hundreds of acts and we were batting 1,000 not one of them had become famous we were proud of it and then one day tragedy struck a little girl by the name of Luann auditioned and she got on the show well who knew at that time that she would go on to be the lead in the road company of the hit musical, Annie. And from that, she co-starred with George Burns in Oh God, Book Two. It almost broke my heart. A gong show act had made it. Well, there's no sense crying over spilt milk, but I would like to show you how it all started for little Lou Ann eight years ago. Now 
here's Luann on our stage tonight. Gang return with new newlyweds when anything for a laugh continues. Burger King breaks it to McDonald's. Gently. We're so sorry, we're so sorry. McDonald's, McDonald's. We're sandwich pizza stuffing. Out of egg McMuffin. Two, two, one, two, two, one. In a nationwide test, our flaky crust sandwich with golden eggs and melted cheese, sausage, bacon, or ham. I'd heard that hospitals used Tylenol, but it wasn't until I was in the hospital with my first baby that I began to trust it for myself. When I needed a pain reliever, they brought me Tylenol. It really helped, and it never bothered my stomach the way aspirin sometimes did. Then I heard that Tylenol is the pain reliever hospitals use most, more than aspirin or any other type of pain reliever. Now that I know how much hospitals trust Tylenol, I wouldn't use anything else. Trust Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. I'm home. Bad news at the dentist. Our teeth aren't getting clean enough. So Mom got us the Reach toothbrush. A toothbrush makes a difference? Clinical studies show Reach cleans 51% better than other leading brushes. Reach is angled to reach every tooth. And only Reach has reaching bristles to get between teeth and along gums. It cleans 51% better. And it's recognized by the American Dental Association. Hope you got me, Reach. Reach from Johnson & Johnson cleans 51% better. Very soon, some of you will notice a change in Doritos. Doritos, now with more nacho cheese flavor than ever. <laughs> Definitely. Saturday, Hooker goes to Chicago and teams up with Nookie of Miami Vice. For basically Hooker, he's dead. Then, a special two-hour love boat set sail for the Caribbean with guests, Lana Turner and Menudo, all starting at 8, 7 Central. Bob, you want to introduce the next act? I would love to. Here's more newlywed game. Girls, the first time you and your husband made Whoopi together, Will he say it was funny or serious? Well, it's been so long, I don't care. <laughs> How much money will your wife say you spent on her before you got what you wanted? <laughs> Gerald? How much? <laughs> How much did you spend on her before you got what you wanted? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a whole lot, I'm telling you. <laughs> if your husband were a bachelor again, would the first girl he'd call for a date be someone where he works, someone in your neighborhood, or one of your friends? Probably a friend. One of your friends? Yes. Oh. That doesn't necessarily... It has to be a girl, right? <laughs> what will your wife say is her favorite kind of water? What's her favorite kind of water, Charlie? That's a strange question. <laughs> Ocean, Ocean water. water. Vince predicted you would say your favorite kind he of water. any kind of water. Well, that's ocean water's water. Well, you just said drinking water. Uh, Stop with no. I'm drinking water. <laughs> 
ocean water. I thought of this thing. <laughs> Ocean. You told me what, bitch? I told you it's a strange question. <laughs> how, many, how many people ask you that question? <laughs> Today, seven. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite water? <laughs> I don't want to tell you. just met. We're having a strange relation, Bob. <laughs> Gentlemen, tell me, what's the highest floor of a building on which you and your wife have ever made love? My wife has claustrophobia. Not hydrophobia. You know, where you're afraid of hydrophobia. Oh, hydrophobia. <laughs> if Albert Einstein's brain weighed 10 pounds, how much does your brain weigh? Seven. Seven. Nine. He said one pound. <laughs> oh, I'm... You keep telling me you don't know anything. What I you was done? smart enough to get him to marry me. Oh. Aside from the obvious, what was the other most memorable event or occurrence that took place on the day or evening that the two of you got Junior started? Well, we can't forget she forgot her pill. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to dip or roll your cruller in? Your favorite thing to dip or roll your cruller in, Jean? Milk. It's got to be milk. That's milk. all I drink. She said it has to be a paint roller. <laughs> cruller. A cruller? A cruller. A cruller is yeah, some a cruller. food. Right. Don, well, what's your favorite what thing? <laughs> who, who knows what a cruller is? I know what a cruller is, but not a, Oh, what's I, your favorite thing to dip or roll your cruller in? Coffee, obviously. Coffee, yeah, all right. Yeah, she yeah. said, obviously, <laughs> sure. It's potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Jim, what's your favorite thing to dip or roll your cruller in? <laughs> what a strange situation, because I don't have any idea what a cruller is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wife knew, so just jump in there. I'll say paint. Paint. All right. For the first time anywhere, never before seen by human eyes, Bob Eubanks and the new newlyweds. Gentlemen, what's the last thing that happened in your bedroom that made your wife laugh like a hyena? And be specific, please. Um, I fell off the bed. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, she said you tickled her. That's the only thing that happened. It's funny. <laughs> see, you doesn't be saying the questions right, see. <laughs> In your, that happened in your bedroom. He didn't say the last thing you did to her. Why are you looking at him? I'm trying not to look at her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why? Are you afraid of her? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Gentlemen, what's the most exotic item in your home? And be specific. Goldfish. Goldfish. All right. Patty predicted you would say the most exotic item is the killer goldfish. You're right. <laughs> Could I see that one more time? Yes, it. <laughs> Gentlemen, how will your wife complete this sentence? Now, this is her talking, all right? First thing in the morning, I usually find my husband's blank on my what? I'll probably find my teeth on her sink. <laughs> Let me pay your part once. You got it. Go right ahead. Okay. Here is the 25-point bonus question. Answer this correctly, and you win our grand prize. Selected especially for me. Selected especially for you. The right. question is, in all the years of the newlywed game, who was the funniest couple you ever had on the show? One answer only, please. Okay. Uh, the Bergs. That's it. That's it. He's got it. And here they are. Pat and Charlie Berg, proof positive that Edith and Archie Bunker still live. Well, your wife said you have or have not ever gotten romantic with two girls at the same time. What's yes, the answer? Definitely yes. Yes? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you devil, you. I used to have a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I didn't think this was any other time. <laughs> 
has your husband or has he not ever gotten romantic with two girls at the same time? Oh, never. He no. never has. <laughs> Charlie, no. I told you all about me before. <laughs> Charlie, hold up the car. That's all right, Charlie. He said he had. <laughs> Who were they? <laughs> Tell me about it. Who were they? You are rotten. Twice, uh, I told you. Twice? You got, you got romantic with two girls at the same time? Yeah. Two or three, was there? Two. 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 But I did it twice. You did it twice? <laughs> and you told her? I told her all about it before I got married. She said, oh, that's all right. You're a nice kid. Pat, do you trust him? Uh, explicitly. <laughs> explicitly, is that uh, right. it? Right, yes. Our huh. marriage is based strictly on trust. Huh. Right. It's a good thing it's not based so on points. So she wouldn't tell you, though. No. Isn't that a son of a gun? Yeah. I told him the truth. Well, why didn't she tell me the truth? Is she a liar? I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. She doesn't look like a fibber. You don't know her. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Huh. Girls, what's the main color scheme inside your house or apartment? I need two colors. Is that the walls in contrast with what, the furniture? I've never been to your house. I don't know. <laughs> well, I didn't know the main color are... scheme inside your house okay, or apartment. Every wall's white, except the bathroom's got naked women on it. That's black and white. So it must be, it's uh, all white walls and uh, brown. White and what? White and, white and brown. White and brown, white all right. And brown. Yeah, well, he said, uh, she's really he said white and green. Where's the green? What's on green? the carpet. The carpet? The only... What have we got in our house? Just a wall Naked and carpet. Naked women. That's a, a carpet that's a shag. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, but it's got other colors mixed in it. White and... Oh, uh, so why don't you say white and green if it had that in it? Oh, what well, She's gone. How come you brought her along? I, I got her out of the home. Oh, really? <laughs> Go to the next one. Pardon me? Why not? Maybe you could trade her in. Pardon? See, everybody else has points and you don't. Oh, fine. You don't... Maybe, maybe you could trade her in. Trying, trying. I said, think like I think. <laughs> when you answer the car, then I'm gone. Yeah, I know. Then I'll be in the home with her. Home with her, right? <laughs> yeah. Girls, how will your husband say you would complete this sentence? My husband is a closet what? Pat? Queen? How did your wife complete this sentence? She said, my husband is a closet what? Charlie, you have no points whatsoever. That's the way I predicted it. If you get this one right, you will move into a tie for last place. <laughs> now, your wife said, you are a closet what? Closet freak. Closet freak. Hang on, Charlie. She said, you're a... Let me see. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Yeah, no violence. That's all I can think of, Charlie. Do the guys at work you know, know you're a closet? It's just on the spur of the moment. It's just on the spur of the moment. That's yeah. all I can think of. Just, uh, Charlie. What did I get you? Charlie. We embarrassed Margie, didn't we? The guys at work, do they know? Oh, this is it. This is it. <laughs> we were married four months, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get out while you can. Think of our son. What son? <laughs> Charlie and Pat are in last place as Bob asks the final question. All right, gentlemen, here it is. A big 25-point bonus question for 25 points. Gentlemen, is most of your money located in one bank or all spread out? Let's go first to couple number one. Charlie and Pat, you have zero. 25 to give you 25, and you'd zoom into first place, Charlie. <laughs> one bank. She said most of your money is located in one bank. One bank. One bank. She said your money is located in all spread out.
Michael. That was six years ago, and they're still together. They're about as together as you can get, ladies and gentlemen. Pat and Charlie Berg, right there. <laughs> Anything for a laugh. 20 years of the best of the Chuck Berry shows continues in a moment. I don't feel one ounce of guilt when I eat. I eat at Wendy's. Wendy's has a new light menu. Hundreds of lower calorie salads, new fresh fruit, and pasta salad. Wendy's light menu even has a lower calorie multigrain bun. I eat all I want from Wendy's light menu. Now, do I look like I feel one ounce of guilt? Try Wendy's new light menu. Jonathan Moore goes to Paris, seeking fun, adventure, and girls. He meets a mysterious woman in an even more mysterious line of work. What are you, a spy or something? Yes, I am a spy. Now, the CIA is after him. And the Russians are trying to kill him. He's having the vacation of a lifetime, if he lives. Gotcha. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at select theaters. Hundreds of beauties came to Hollywood. Hi, Ma. One will win instant stardom when Gene Kelly and John Davidson discover Miss Hollywood 85. Coming up next, live. There's a lot of love on this stage tonight. 20 years worth. I'm glad we could share it with you. On behalf of all of us, we'd like to thank the hundreds of talented people who made this hour possible. And more importantly, we would like to thank the millions of you out there who made the past 20 years possible. Good night. This is Dick Neufeld for Chuck Berry and anything for a laugh. Tomorrow on Good Morning America, David Hartman talks with the family of Artificial Heart recipient William Schrader, also Tommy Lasorda of the Dodgers, and Phoebe Cates from Lace. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight, Peter Jennings anchors from Bonn, West Germany, covering...